right, we're celebrating Christmas a little bit early with my family and I'm gonna make some recipes for that. I always go above and beyond. <laughs> when In our group chat, when we plan like the meals that we're gonna bring, I was like, you guys know, I don't know what I'm making, but I'm gonna make way too much of it and that's just how we roll. I feel pretty festive with like the red towels, the red KitchenAid, the red sweater, yeah. Also the red KitchenAid, uh, I've been on the hunt for a new one. This one's old, I've, it, remember when it broke? <laughs> That was fun. Anyway, it had nothing to do with today besides the point, hydration station. It purifies the soul. We gotta get things rolling along before the baby needs me in about 3.7 seconds. Okay, first thing we're gonna throw together is a Texas pecan fudge pie. And I said it that way, pecan, because that's the Southern way to say it. Us Northerners say pecan. This is a pecan, this is a pecan. Anyway, I grew up with Northerners, even though I live in Florida. It's kind of like a hodgepodge. Are, is Florida considered Southern? Because some people don't recognize it as Southern. It's just like the retirement state, you know? You get a break on those taxes. Anyway. I also plan on making my famous Christmas lasagna. I've only made it one year, and I think it was a couple years ago, so how many years in a row do I have to make it a tradition? I'm saying it's already a tradition in my mind. Pineapple casserole, seems weird, we're gonna do it anyway. Colored greens, awesome. Southern staple again. Publix potato salad with french fried onions. I don't know what it's called. It's so good. I haven't made it since Easter three years ago. I've been salivating for it. Every night I fall asleep thinking about it. So today's the day we're gonna make it. Cranberry apple pecan, wild rice, something like that. Excited about it, it's like a healthier, nice little whatever it's got cranberries in it and then cream spinach also plan on making oh my favorite christmas brownies i actually made them a few weeks ago again wake up in the morning thinking about those for i'm like what's for breakfast hmm wish i still had some of those christmas brownies in my fridge to munch on they're so good so hopefully i have a time to whip all of that up uh, this is the day before, thankfully. So however much I get done today, hopefully a lot, hopefully it's done before the Bucks game goes on and we have another get together to go to today. And Eleanor's on her way right now to a birthday party. What is life? It's so busy. Life with five kids. I just don't even know how people function. I'm barely hanging on. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna make is this pex this. Trying to gather the ingredients. I think you need See, I didn't print anything out, trying to be eco-friendly and all that good stuff. But then I come to the blog post where it has the instructions. There's literally an ad, like every fifth word. <sighs> and then all the pop-ups and stuff. Why? Okay. Well, I tried to be convenient uh, while picking the items for the rest of my recipes. But this one, for whatever reason, I didn't buy a pie crust. I was like, ah! You can make it, it'll be fine. So let me grab my food processor. And you know what? Homemade pie crust really is so much more superior than store-bought. But if you can't, don't have a cow and are unable to make butter homemade, then store-bought is fine. In a garden style. I actually forgot how to make homemade pie crust. Oh, crap. Crap. There's a fly in my ring light. Also, I'm missing the blade for the, the, whatever that's called. <laughs> oh my gosh, I found it. And guess where it was? The first place I looked. That's a first. Uh, okay. Have you ever made a Texas chocolate pecan pie? Is that what this is? Texas chocolate pecan pie? I thought it had something to do with fudge. That's not what Pinterest said. Hold on a second. Texas Pecan Fudge Pie. I like that title better. If there's a fly flying around, it's, I think it's stuck in my ring light. Ha! I still missed him. <sighs> okay, I need to look up a recipe. High crust recipe. Oh my gosh, why are there so many? Okay, I think I only need half, so I'm gonna half this recipe. Oh, there's already a thing inside here. What is this? Quarter cup. I remember the first time I made homemade pie crust. Well, not the first time, but the, I remember the last time I, I made homemade pie crust for, hold on, I'm gonna lose count. And gosh, I, you know what, I second guess myself. Again, it was the last time I had just had a baby, so three years ago. And I was like, why am I doing this? What is even, it's Christmas, okay? You go above and beyond for Christmas recipes. A little bit of salt to enhance the flavor of the crust. 
But I do remember researching, like, ooh, what should I? Sugar, it's optional, so I'm gonna say no to that. I remember researching, I think Tasty has a really good recipe. It's like, you know, the best because they, it's their literal job to like test recipes and find out which one is the best. But also the best is subjective, you know? Like I have a chef's palate, okay? So what's the best for me isn't the best for you. <laughs> but the basic pie crust recipe is all the same. You get really cold butter, chop it into chunky monkeys, throw it in with some flour and salt, and I, I'm pretty sure, oh, a little bit of ice water, that's right. Oh, good thing I have some ice water here. You can cut in the butter with a pastry blender or use one of these blenders if you have it. This is a pastry blender right here. Only real chefs have this. And you're an ultra chef if you actually use it. Only takes a little bit to get this right consistency. And then from here, you just add a little bit of ice water. I'm just gonna grab a couple of tablespoons and I'm gonna measure how my parents used to measure my cough medicine, just with a spoon, okay? Less is more at this point because you can always add but you can't take away. And you know when it's done, when it is a really good consistency. So when you're able to um, put it in your hand like this and it's, it sticks together, it forms a nice dough, if you will. It feels like sand, but you're able to mold it. And since I have a hard time with dough um, just being a little too crusty and flaky, I'm just going to add a tiny bit more water. All right, let's see. Oh, you see, now it's really coming together. That's really nice, love that. And the smell of this is just unmatched. I am going to turn it out onto some saran wrap and then just form it into a disc. See how nicely this comes together? Oh my God, if you could smell this right now, mm, you wouldn't wanna go home. Yes, this is perfection. I am not a pie person, but like this kind of pie, I'm down. Pecan pie is my favorite. What's your favorite pie? I'm gonna wrap this up really nice and snug. Get this into the fridge just to keep it cool until we need it. Starting now on the actual pie filling, first thing you have to have is, should I show you all the ingredients at once? I mean, it's pretty basic, just pecans, mini chocolate chips, heavy whipping cream, brown sugar, and uh, some eggs. You got this? Good. First things first. Take the hot fudge. I had to have Alex run back up to the grocery store to get this because I forgot it. It's a long story, I shared it on my Instagram. 45 seconds in the microwave and then dump it out into a mixing bowl. Oh yeah. One year I made a peanut butter cup pie. It is my one of my aunt's recipes and she gave it to me one year and it was a hit just like she said it would be. But do you guys have those classic recipes where you always think, oh, so-and-so is going to make this because she's great at it and always brings it. I feel like I'll be remembered as the aunt who is always bringing something new and weird. But usually a hit, three eggs gets added in here. Don't tell Food Network about that. The fudge smells really good. A quarter cup of light brown sugar, a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream, a little splash of vanilla extract, and a little hit of salt. Whisk this together until it's nice and combined. Two thirds cup of mini chocolate chips, and I honestly don't know why I bought mini chocolate chips, but here we are. And three cups of pecans. I'm gonna chop mine up because I feel like one year I made a Pioneer Woman pecan pie recipe, and it was, first of all, pecan pie is my favorite. Yes, I should get a cutting board, but I didn't, and that's fine by me. I've got granite. Anyway, her recipe called for finely chopped pecans uh, for some reason, and I've just done that ever since. I feel like it lays nicer, it's easier to eat. I'm not gonna chop these up too, too much, but I will go through a little bit. All right, so three cups, a one, a two, a three, and some for the chef. All right, mix that in, and we're ready to dump it into the pie crust that we haven't even formed. I'm just gonna roll it out. Teeny tiny dusting of flour. We don't want it to get too dry. We want a nice flaky dough. And since I have the recipe, this will only make one. <laughs> I couldn't find my rolling pin, so 
I'm gonna make do with this one. I think it'll be just fine. That's a fine. One. Okay, found it. Couldn't deal with that much longer. Also, I'm feeling like I should have uh, made the whole pie crust because, what? This is supposed to be one crust? Ooh, this is really nice. Sometimes it cracks and that's fine. You just push it right back together. And I feel like that's good. To put it in the pan, I just roll it over the rolling pin to transfer it for a nice, easy transfer. You don't need to grease the pan because there's so much butter in this crust. It's not gonna stick. And here she is, a nice rustic pie crust that definitely says, I am homemade. <laughs> Have you ever seen such a beautiful pie crust? <laughs> Dump the contents straight in into the oven for about 40 minutes at 350. Can't wait to eat that. And always make dessert first, right? That's why we made that first. And also, it's a Texas style dessert, and aren't those recipes always better than any other recipes? Yeah. I would argue yes. So much so that my family and I have decided to make our January themed dinner Texas themed recipes because they're just supreme. Yeah. So, uh, next recipe I'm gonna make is creamed spinach. I'm a fan of spinach. A few of my kids like it. A lot of family members like it, so I figured it would be a hit. Steam and back. So I'm just gonna cook these in the microwave real quick. Oh my gosh, cream cheese? Here's the problem. I looked at too many spinach recipes. You need cream cheese for this heavy cream. Just some weird things in general. But the first thing you need to do is chop up an onion. And you know, what happened to GMOs? Okay, this is the smallest onion I think I've ever cut up. Also, it was not in the fridge. This is so small, I might cut up two onions. This is not a good spinach to onion ratio. It fits in the palm of my hand. Unacceptable. Also, these were just in the pantry. They weren't in the fridge. And it typically bothers my eyes. Well, my, not my eyes because I wear contacts. Did you guys know that? Uh, but if you keep your onions in the fridge, they won't make you tear up. Maybe as much. I don't know, I wear contacts, so I guess it's kind of like a shield. But even when I wear glasses, I feel like it's not so bad. You know what, I can smell that pie, so I'm gonna take it out now, because the nose knows. Here it is, nice and cooked, the crust is nice and gold. Oof, maybe I should have baked the bottom first, I don't know. You can blind bake it, but I just chose not to, mostly because time constraints. Back to the creamed corn. I'm cutting up the rest of the onion. Moving on to the stove top, I'm just gonna throw a couple pats of butter in here. While that's going, I am going to drain the spinach, and you can just do this with your hands, like squeeze it between your hands. I'm just gonna let it drain in a colander. I have three 15 ounce bags of spinach. The recipe calls for three 10 ounce bags, uh, or I assume the blocks are 10 ounces, but I just got these because I thought, well, more is more and why not? But it is important to get as much moisture out of the spinach as possible, otherwise it'll just get a little soggy. So if you can see how much is really coming out of here, there's a lot of liquid. So just squeeze it until not much else is coming out. All right, as you can see, a ton more is coming out. Once the butter is over here melted, mine got a little brown, Add the onions and let that cook down. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. I think it's good to season every layer. And uh, the salt will really bring the moisture out of the onions as well. Let them cook a little bit faster. Once the onion is looking nice, add six cloves of garlic. Mine is fresh. Mix that till it's fragrant, about 30 seconds or so. I love making spinach, but typically I just make mine with a little bit of oil, a little bit of garlic, and then the spinach, and it tastes amazing. Add four ounces of cream cheese, so it's half of a block. Once that's kind of melted, add one cup of heavy whipping cream, and that's just gonna bring this over the top. Is that a one cup? I should probably get my normal measuring cup. And then add one cup of mozzarella cheese, just a big handful going in there. You know, maybe a little more. And then half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And you know this recipe is probably keto because of the copious amounts of dairy. <laughs> so give that a mix and then throw the spinach in once it's all melted. They call this a steakhouse style, or maybe I found a Southern style cream spinach, whatever it's called and um, now I understand why. Calories don't count when you're out to eat, right? Or if you're East Southern. There is more dairy in this than spinach, 
but uh, here it goes, adding in the spinach here. And it says to serve warm, but I am going to throw this in a casserole dish and just heat it in my oven uh, before I leave tomorrow. So I'm turning the heat off and mixing it in. If you can see what's happening back here with all this cheese, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. This should just be called lots of cheese with some spinach. I mean, can you see this? I had to give you a close up. This is ridiculous. Also probably extremely delicious and simple to throw together. So here it is, all finished, creamy spinach. It, at this point, is your body even getting the nutrients from the spinach? <laughs> and there she blows, right in the casserole dish. And I will likely top it with even more Parmesan cheese tomorrow. All right, back at it. Cream spinach is done. We're two recipes in, and you know what? I just, I need to crack into this, okay? These are allergy-friendly, uh, pre-made cookie dough balls. And you're supposed to, you just pop them in the freezer and make cookies. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just eat the dough. I don't even have to dare salmonella about it because they're gluten-free, dairy-free. Oh my gosh, are they soy-free? Are they soy-free? Free of soy, hallelujah. It's exactly the pick-me-up that I need, okay? Sweet Lorraine, sweet Lorraine. Bum, bum. The next recipe I'm working on is Caesar, I don't, I still don't know. Caesar roasted potatoes. I have baby potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold if you have them. Something with like a nice light skin, uh, but really I'm sure you can use anything that you want. You also need some Caesar dressing, French fried onions. This is what makes this amazing. The french fried onion, anything with this tastes better, right? Green onions, and then Italian blend cheese. I don't have those things. I wasn't planning on making, well, like I was planning on making this. I also wanted to make it on Thanksgiving. That never happened. I thought I had green onions, but I don't. So that's a sad story to tell. Uh, all right, the first thing we're gonna do is just cut up some potatoes. So I'm going to cut the potatoes up, probably into quarters, even the little ones. I don't know, I might go more than that. Well, that's too good. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Just a nice bite-sized piece so that, you know, chunks of potato aren't hanging out of people's mouth. You don't want it too big. You know, I might go even smaller than that, right? Okay, I'll do whatever I want. You do whatever you want and we'll call it fair. Officially, we need 28 ou eight ounces of these potatoes, but like, who weighs their potatoes? Unless you're just looking at the bag, whatever. I'm just gonna use a hefty amount and then do whatever I feel like from there when it comes to cheese and the rest of the ingredients. All right, I've probably got about two and a half pounds here. I gave them a rinse, I'm just gonna toss them in a dish and I'm going to put them in the microwave for like eight minutes just so they like start the cooking process. You know, I don't even know why I have my KitchenAid out. <laughs> we used it last night uh to make cookies the world's best cookies by the way maybe i'll share that recipe with you again but i i'm moving on because the potatoes in the microwave they have to cook for eight minutes and then you throw them into the oven whoops i forgot to turn that on 400 degrees on the oven then the potatoes go in the oven for 15 minutes and then i'll finish the dressing and stuff with that so i'm going to move on to something i was really excited about paula dean pineapple casserole first of all paula dean recipes i mean they're basically texan they're southern full of fat full of flavor full of deliciousness uh never heard of a pineapple casserole before but i've heard of worse things like spam actually i had spam the other day and it was delicious I had some kind of spam on rice with seaweed and you know what, it was great. We had one of our themed family dinners was, I didn't fill that up all the way. I just got bored. It was Hawaiian themed. Oh gosh. But this has nothing to do with that. I'm sure this could be Hawaiian themed too because it has pineapple in it. And Pinterest thinks all things pineapple are Hawaiian themed. Whatever. I thought it would be good for Christmas because what goes better with ham than pineapple? Literally a million other things, but for whatever reason, I thought this was a good pairing, mostly because I read it on the blog. A great addition to ham, so here we are. You need some sugar, flour, pineapple chunks, Ritz crackers, a stick of butter, and cheese. Two cups of cheese, what a rip. 
I thought two cups came in one package, just read one and three quarters cup. I should file a grievance. I need to tidy this place up. I do not know where my measuring cup is. One cup of, have you ever had a casserole with one cup of sugar in it? Has that ever happened to you? One cup of sugar, this is a dessert. And that's only half a cup. One cup of, what? Sweet potato casserole doesn't even have a whole cup, does it? Probably. Six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. This is weird. Things are getting weird here. You just stir that in. Okay. I wasn't filming the whole time? What? Okay, you're supposed to gradually mix in this cheese, which is pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Like, why, why am I gradually mixing in the cheese? It's dumb. But, you know, people do what they want to do. I was only going to add one bag, but more is more. Plus it calls for two cups, so here we go, here we are. Also, coating it in the flour mixture ensures that it doesn't fall to the bottom of the casserole pan. That's a trick with anything. If you're making blueberry muffins, you do the same thing with that too. Then I'm gonna take two cans of the pineapple chunky hunkies. You're supposed to drain it. I almost got crushed pineapple, but you're supposed to drain it. But I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to reserve some of the juice. So I'm gonna do that and then mix the rest. This is real weird, you guys. Never in my life have I ever. Smells weird, looks weird, feels weird. Could be a hit though, okay? No judgments. Stir until well combined. This is so bizarre. Who's gonna be brave enough to eat this? Well, it looks well combined to me. All right, that looks worse than it did before. Well, folks, here it is. Cotton candy, sweet and roll. Let me see, pineapple casserole. <laughs> if you don't know the lyrics, make them up. <laughs> okay, well that's, I'm questioning my entire life at this moment in time. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna share some really great, cool recipes with you guys, and that is what I found on Pinterest. But wait, there's more. For the top coat, we need one cup of Ritz cracker crumbs. Some of the recipes called for white bread, and that just grossed me out, so. I just used one sleeve. I feel like I might need more. You know what, I'm not gonna dirty a dish. One stick of melted butter goes straight in with, I think it called for a couple teaspoons or tablespoons of the pineapple juice, so just a little bit of that goes in. That's looking real wet. So I'm going to add some more crackers. Well, that didn't work as well, but that's okay. <laughs> Have a utensil anywhere? I got two utensils right on the ends of my wrists. Start the process, help my food processor out a little bit. Here we go. Come on! Nope, nothing. I don't know, this is real weird. Why is it so wet? I like a lot of topping, you know? Should've just got a bowl. You know what, I like, I like that I gave a little texture to the topping. That looks great, actually. Back to the weird pineapple. You sprinkle this mixture <laughs> right on top. This is out of this world. And then cook it in your oven. Who the heck knows? 25 to 30 minutes. I have uh, good expectations for this, actually. I feel like this is gonna be one of those dishes where everyone tries just a little bit of because they're kind of unsure, and then they definitely do not come back for seconds. <laughs> All right, hey, here it is, pineapple casserole. Let me know if pineapple casserole is a staple in your family. I need to know, I need to know if using fresh pineapple is better, if using crushed pineapple would be a better selection. I don't know, man. All right, the potatoes are almost done in the oven, so I'm gonna make the coating, the rest of it. One cup, oh gosh, is it Caesar? I feel like it is, yeah. Isn't it called like Caesar potatoes? One cup of this, I feel like more is better than not. Caesar dressing, mmm, that's the good stuff. It gives it like a little tanginess and ooh, what's that? It's not something that you would typically find. I'm just gonna give the potatoes just a little mix. I didn't add anything to them. I just kind of let them roast and cook in the microwave just to soften them up a little bit. I mean, they could definitely use more time. So I'm going to throw them back in the microwave. Or the, you know what, the oven's on. I'm just gonna throw them back in the oven. Back to the dressing. Half a cup of Italian cheese. What is that even? Italian blend. 
So I have mozzarella and Parmesan and I feel like that's like whatever, you know? You could use cheddar if that's what you wanted. I also think cheddar would work really well in this. And then a lot of french fried onions. That's the best part of this recipe. Leave some to top it with. Give that a mix. I should have got a bigger bowl. We're definitely gonna need more dressing. And then when the potatoes get out, just mix it all together. Oh my gosh, okay, it's been a while. I got the baby down. Uh, so per the usual, I did this wrong. <laughs> You're just supposed to mix it in with, I don't even know, I think just the dressing. I'm gonna add more to this. So I think it needs it and it's delicious. And then you're supposed to top it with the French fried onions and cheese, but I just figure I'm pretty sure I made it better this way, okay? I'm just gonna mix everything together and then top it with some more cheese and French fried onions. What's wrong with that? Oh my gosh, yep, this is it. You know what, add chicken and this could be a meal. This could be a meal. Once you top it with the cheese and more french fried onions, you throw it back into the oven just for a few minutes until uh, the cheese melts and everything's nice and melty. But I'll do that tomorrow morning just to heat it through. And that sounds good to me. But I'll do that now, just a little sprinkle. Mm, this is actually the perfect amount. Oh, and you know what I'm missing from this? Green onions. I normally have some growing in my garden, for like for real, for real, not even in my garden, just in my kitchen counter. And uh, I thought I had some, but I didn't. So that would really kick this up a notch. But you know, fresh herbs always do, and it's a shame when I don't have any around. But this is good enough. And good enough is as good as a feast. Best part about this is that it tastes uh, delicious or at least my memory thinks it does. Moving on to some fancy rice peel. Well, I don't know what it's called, oh crap. Cran, oh jeez. Cranberry apple pecan, oh, I just had it. Wild rice pilaf, okay, so um, I bought this wild rice blend for an arm and a leg. I don't know why it was so pricey or why I ended on this brand and not another. I don't know. This one seemed to fit the bill. And I was like, eh, it's Christmas, so let me spend a couple extra dollars. But I feel as though I made the wrong choice. Okay, also, I'm reading this recipe. It calls for some dried cranberries, which are also pretty pricey. Some thyme, which is like, oh, if you don't have any in your garden. A honey crisp apple. This is like rice if you want to spend a thousand dollars on a side dish that people will probably pass up because mashed potatoes taste way better i'm just kidding i feel like oh god oh my gosh it's showing the rest of my feel like this is gonna be a hit also in the recipe she calls for an optional garnish which is thyme and parsley but in the picture it shows rosemary right also, I got this time from the grocery store, but it looks like it's been sitting in my fridge for six months. So I'm gonna check whatever's in my fridge. Aha! Have some ro- Ooh, sick, 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 sick. Why is there moisture in here? I do believe this one went bad. Bye. Oh, it's messy. Okay, well this one looks good. We'll use this for garnish. I've got a headache. All right, what do we do here? Oh my gosh, what do we need? 17 ingredients for this? This is not everything. Oh, apple juice, butter, salt, and Italian seasoning. It calls for some other crap, but I don't care. A bay leaf? I'm gonna leave. I think I might have a bay leaf, actually. Ooh, I do, but if I didn't, I would be okay with leaving that out. Garlic, and my worst nightmare, apple cider vinegar. Okay, things are getting weird. Let's just move over here. Uh, you also need Dijon. I feel like a kid just went into their pantry and grabbed everything that was in there and decided to make a meal out of it. How much Dijon? One tablespoon, one and a half cups of apple juice. I made this earlier today. Okay, okay, hold on, I gotta show you something. You also need one and a half cups of chicken broth. Look, see how the spout's on this side? Apparently in an oil can, when you're filling up oil <laughs> in the car. You're not supposed to do it this way because like air gets in it. I don't know. It's shaped a little different, but you're supposed to pour it this way and it pours smoother. I don't know. I just wanted to share that. I shared it and I was like, what? That's crazy. Does that make any sense? One and a half cups of chicken broth, one and a half tablespoons of butter. This is very precise. Then you add some salt and pepper. 
And then some dried thyme and parsley, AKA Italian seasoning. And one bay leaf. That looks fancy. Well, now I'm wondering if I should double the recipe. It only calls for one cup of rice. What should I do here? What is this spoon from? I feel like that's fine. <laughs> when it comes to a boil, just add the rice. I'm just, that's good enough. Let that cook for 45 minutes. What the heck? I've moved on to the lasagnas. I just have a couple pounds of ground beef in here. And I like to do sausage too. Uh, like ground beef and sausage together, but I don't have any sausage, so to report, and I forgot to buy some. I'm just adding a little bit of garlic in there, just for flavor. I also sometimes like to add onions. Dice them up real small, no one will ever know they're in there, but you know. And then some tomatoes. So I have tomato sauce. This was buy one, get one free, and I figured it was a good deal. Also, it's convenient. I don't have to sit here with a can opener. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it has some flavor in there already, so it is really nice to have pre-made sauce. And oh, this kind is one of my favorite, the vineyard marinara. One of my favorite jarred spaghetti sauces because I feel like, oh God, it has one of the best flavors. I'm adding three jars, and then what I also do is put water in the jars just to get the rest of it out of there. And then also to stretch it a little more, you can add a whole jar full of water or a couple jars in this case, if you're making a ton of it, and then just add a can of uh, tomato paste and that'll thicken it up. And that is a great way to make things stretch or, um, if they're on sale, because at this point, a jar of sauce costs less than a, can of like tomato puree or something like that and then do tomato puree or crushed tomatoes and then fill the can up with water and add a can of tomato paste to that so that's a great way to make sauce it's just super simple and easy to make i am going to add you know let me taste it first yeah it's good but it's not great you know it does have a really nice flavor but i am going to add some salt and pepper i would add garlic powder at this point but i'm all out and then just some more italian seasoning wait did i say i would add garlic but i already did i can't remember my left from my right these days okay moving on to la fromage I have some ricotta cheese right now. Maybe French wasn't the correct term to use, but I have some ricotta cheese. I have two small 15 ounce containers and then one large, this is like 32 ounces. I'm doubling the recipe. I'm making two. If I can get more out of that, that'd be great. But I'm just making one for tomorrow and then one for later. It's just a nice, easy meal that does well in the freezer. I'm going to add some mozzarella cheese, probably the whole package, and then some Parmesan cheese in here too. You can add fresh herbs, parsley, thyme, all that good stuff, but I have found that it tastes just as well if you use the dried stuff. I like to go heavy handed on. <laughs> and then just give this a mix, and this is your cheese mixture, your filling. Some of the recipes, I've made a bechamel sauce before, that's really good in lasagna. I've also made chicken shells, like instead of using a red sauce, you use like a white sauce and that's really fantastic. I've, I've shared that recipe before, probably on a what's for dinner video. And um, I had it in my freezer as a freezer meal because I think I made two of them and that was fantastic to have. It's stored in the freezer really great. I've also been wanting to try a buffalo chicken lasagna. You know, just take something simple and then switch it up just a little bit. And it's like a whole new meal. That's looking real good. Oh wait, you know what we're missing? Ha ha. A couple of eggs. I know you were screaming at me. The eggs. All right, just mix those in and that will help a lot. And I think that's it. I mean, there's no skill involved at all in this. You just, it's no big deal. That's cool, moving on. Okay, assembly time. I just have this tray for the freezer. And I have, these are the best invention ever created. Oven ready lasagna noodles. And these happen to be gluten free and they are just as good. Yeah, that rice definitely is not enough to feed a crowd. I'm just saying. Okay, that this sauce is so great. So easy to put together, but the flavor is powerful. If you don't know how to set up lasagna, it took me years to like actually make one because I always thought, oh, no, they're so simple, okay? Just put a little bit of sauce on the bottom so the noodles don't stick. I think that's the thought process behind it. Throw a couple of noodles down. I feel like this is the hard part, just trying to fill up the space. 
And I always put way too much thought into this. <laughs> Cover that with some cheese. Spread it out, peanut butter jelly style. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some more sauce on top. Again, perfection does not exist. More noodles and then repeat the process until you're out of ingredients. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. <laughs> I kept I kept calling this my uh, traditional, my famous traditional Christmas lasagna. And you know what? We had someone who's rather new to the family and she said, you know what? My family makes lasagna every year and it was so nice to have this. It was delicious, so says everyone else. I skipped eating it because I'm trying to do uh, go without dairy again. Try, um, you know, we're trying new things every day. And uh, so it was a hit amongst adults and children alike and someone else in the family it sparked like the whole you know famous uh, traditional christmas xyz and so i just said that about a bunch of things and it was a thing it was funny and it also reminds me that i need to text some of my family members to get their recipes for certain things that they made like someone made a colby pie listen i've got a lot of questions about it but as soon as i get the recipe i'll share it with you also a veggie salad oh my god uh, well isn't every salad veggie well no potato salad anyway such good recipes can't wait to share more with you all right well i totally forgot about this rice it is still cooking it's ridiculous it's been like an hour i just i'm not even setting a timer anymore i flipped right to it my christmas brownies that i love but i'm taking the shortcut i'm not making the uh the brown, well, you know what? Is that what I love so much about it? The brownie itself? Um, I'm gonna make these, just, oh wait, is this halving the recipe? You know what, I don't care, it's, you know, I don't even know if I have marshmallows. But really, if you just make any brownies and then get frosting, I shared a really amazing brownie frosting recipe. It's one of my tried and true favorites for years and years and years, forever and always. Always and forever. But I also love this frosting, different ways, but also marshmallows. And I feel like I'm probably gonna make the brownies in this recipe book. Oh, why am I the way that I am? Yep, I am. <laughs> it's Christmas, you know? So I just realized I only have this much cocoa powder left. And so if I need more, I'm just gonna use hot cocoa powder. <laughs> That's where I'm at. One cup of butter and four eggs. All right, let's get these brownies uh, rolling along because it is nearing 2 a.m. I should do dishes, but whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna wake the baby up. Hey, cool story. I just realized I forgot to buy a Christmas gift for one of my nephews. <laughs> uh-huh. I made a list. I checked it twice. Still not good enough. You know, and then of course the easy answer is just give him cash, which is probably what we're going to do, but it's just so impersonal. It says, I didn't get to know you well enough this year to actually buy you a gift that I think that you would enjoy. Uh, instead, I'm just gonna hand you a pile of cash and you can do what you will with it. I don't know, the pro of cash, of course, is that he can buy whatever he wants with it. Now, nah, well, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I bought gift cards for other people and I, even though they're for specific stores, or, you know, and then what am I supposed to do? Okay, I need a mixer for this, but ironically, I just put my mixer away. So I'm gonna get some uh, tricep workout going. And I found my measuring cup. Did I tell you that? I'm really excited. Guess where it was? The last place I looked, that's right. So to a bowl, two cups of sugar. I remember the first time I made this, I was surprised at how much sugar there was in this, but now it just makes me happy. A quarter teaspoon salt and crack in four eggs. Two more going in to round it off. Whisk this together until it's well combined. To this you add one and a half cups of flour. Who the heck is at my door? It's real late. Oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna get murdered. <laughs> it turns out uh, it was someone we know. So where did I leave off? Oh, oh boy. Baking powder, is that where? One and a half teaspoons of baking powder goes in here. And you know what? I put my teaspoons away looking all cruddy like that. It's just like, I saw someone else do it once and that kind of gave me the allowance to uh, do it myself. And I've been doing that ever since. Give this a mix. 
and then we're gonna head to the stovetop. But listen up, it's worth the drive to the stovetop. And plus we need to check on our rice because it's been like an hour and a half. Well, it's getting there, but uh, not quite. Also smells like Dijon mustard. To a saucepan, add one cup of butter. Perfect ratio, one cup of butter, two cups of sugar. <laughs> one clogged artery. Remember when I made Joanna Gaines chocolate silk pie? Those were the days. Hey, to the butter, you only need, I thought I needed a whole cup. I don't know what I was thinking. Is this thing on? Nope. That's so cool. Four tablespoons of cocoa powder. That's it. We can do that. Hey, remind me to put cocoa powder on my grocery list, okay? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go a little crazy and add some espresso powder. Yes, espresso instant coffee to the brownie mix. It helps enhance the chocolate flavor. It's Ina Garden's secret. Ina Garden's brownies, outrageous brownies, are some of the best brownies hands on I've ever made. Also, her um, like chocolate pie. What is it called? Chocolate pie brownie. I don't, a rose by any other name. Amazing, so, yep. It's not in the recipe, but it's like, I don't follow rules, so just a, just a little sprinkle in here, about a teaspoon or so, nothing crazy. Maybe a little bit more, because that's good. Yeah, I can't smell it, so maybe a little more. It's Christmas. So I melted the butter uh, just enough for it to melt and then left some chunks in there, just so it's not too hot when I add it to the batter. I am going to add just a splash of vanilla extract. Mix that in. Oh my gosh, I, you know what? I want this to be a tradition. This to be my Christmas staple recipe. I want my kids to be like, oh mom, call me up when they're older. Mom, remember that brownie recipe? Can you tell me what? was your secret ingredient and I'll be like, it's espresso pen. But really I'm gonna say, I don't remember. And mine will always taste better than theirs. And that's what Christmas is all about. <laughs> okay, once we get this incorporated, oh, it, you know what? <laughs> Baking, <laughs> okay, now I can smell, smell the espresso powder. Baking just makes me so dang happy. Does it make you happy? Oh my God, we should just call these espresso brownies at this point. And then you know what, the whole tray is for me. I don't care if no one else wants them. In fact, I hope nobody else wants them so that I get to devour them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I mean, look, look at this. Have you ever seen something so incredible? This is, oh my gosh, yep. My favorite, hands down. Okay, here we go. Spray in the pan down. We don't want any of this to stick. We want every single last bit to end up in our bellies. Dump it all in, nine by 13 baking dish, or bigger if you have one, but ouch, I don't. Magic is what is in there, and, and you know what? Salmonella, you know I dare you. Absolutely delicious, going in for a second. Guess what I found in my pantry? Marshmallows, happy about that. I'm gonna whip together the frosting while I have just a minute. You need one cup of butter. So this recipe has a whole dang pound of butter. And you know what, that's why it's the best. But to the butter, we're just going to add a splash of vanilla. A quarter cup of cocoa powder, which we already know I don't have. But I'm gonna add whatever rest that I do. And then, some hot cocoa powder. <laughs> you know what, you work with what you have, right? There's gotta be cocoa in there. One third cup of milk. And then three and a half cups of powdered sugar. And then mix this all together and that's the frosting and trust me, it will spread across a nine by 13 pan even though you think you're probably going to need more. Um, I don't know what consistency it's supposed to be because this tradition hasn't been around for very long for me. And I think that's pretty good. I should have used a measuring cup, but I didn't. And there's that. I think once I get it in the fridge to firm everything up, it'll be fine. All my word. This is the mountain of dishes. I definitely wanted to share this with you because this is the stuff that they don't show you on the Food Network, okay? All the stuff that you have to clean after you bake and cook. I am so glad that I did the dishes. As much as I didn't want to, I knew I wouldn't want to tomorrow even more. <laughs> and I'm waiting on the brownies, the baby's asleep, all things are st were stacking up, telling me, Kim, just take 10 minutes and do the dishes and I'm glad that I got them done because now I don't have to worry about them. Okay, back to the brownies. These are my famous Christmas traditional brownies and holy cow, they are so good. I did mess up on the 
topping the frosting you're supposed to do that on the stovetop some of it and I think it really um these were a little grainy also because I used a hot chocolate powder instead of cocoa powder could have attributed to that and I like to cover it once I put a bag of marshmallows on top because it just the heat from the brownies straight out of the oven it gets the marshmallows nice and melty but you don't have to cover it they'll still like melt to the brownie so they'll stick to it so that's really nice too i just cover it with a hefty portion of the frosting and this is a winner it hits every time i would highly recommend good morning uh it is early in the morning but i want to make sure that there's enough time i don't even know what time it is oh seven i want to make sure there's enough time for the collard greens to cook in the crock pot before we have to leave this afternoon I almost did it last night and I thought maybe that's a little too long. But now that I'm thinking, I probably should have done it last night and put it on low, but I didn't. So um, I'm gonna throw it together easy, real easy. First thing I'm going to do is throw some ham hocks in here. This might seem weird, but it adds so much flavor. I'm actually just gonna add two. Um, and normally I get them smoked, but that wasn't an option. So I'm just gonna do that. And I typically don't do this part, but I was reading actual recipes and they all called for onion. So I'm, and you know me, I love onion. So I am just going to throw an onion in here. I'm gonna dice it up real small. So it kind of like melts as it cooks and you're just left with that delicious onion flavor. I never had collard greens until I met my husband. And we also eat them, um, when I make a good luck dinner in the new year. So I'm curious, do you guys have the good luck dinner? It's like colored greens and each, each food item represents something. And cornbread is one of them. Uh, I can't think about the others right now. Some kind of meat represents coins. Oh, black eyed peas represents gold or coins or something like that. I would encourage you to Google it. And maybe start that tradition of having good luck dinner every year. It's a new year thing. Okay, in goes the onion. Also add three garlic cloves. And this is something I never knew existed. It's the like bouillon cubes, but just the powder form. Better than bouillon, I'm just saying. A couple teaspoons of this goes in. Some salt and pepper. I also never really add this. I normally just use the ham hock, collard greens, and uh, chicken broth. It calls for some olive oil. Maybe I'm supposed to saute the ham hocks. I don't know, I didn't read anything. And then a little bit of apple cider vinegar if you want to ruin the dish. There we go. And then I have this massive bag of collard greens. And I'm going to shove all of them in. I almost got, you know, the fresh collards and cut them myself. And then I just found the bag and put them back because it's, just, you know, convenience and all that. Now, this will wilt down a little bit, but not much. I'm going to add, whoa, ho, I heated this up just to get things going a whole carton, four cups of chicken broth, but it calls for five, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. And usually, you know what, I think I'm gonna do more than that. I didn't microwave this one, I'm gonna microwave the rest. Oh crap, I wasn't recording. That's it, you just pop a top on it and then mix it throughout the day. It's simple, easy, delicious. The collard greens came out fantastic. Everything was very good. I will say the chocolate pecan pie, I didn't get to enjoy that, but it was hit or miss. Some people really liked it. The pineapple casserole, surprisingly, people enjoyed that. <laughs> okay. I was surprised. I'm just showing you around everything that everyone else made and what we had to indulge in that day. And uh, everything was fantastic, but the chocolate pecan pie, what people would rather have just pecan pie, traditional, famous Christmas oh, traditional oh pie. Uh, lots of screaming going on, very loud family. But this, can you even believe my brother and sister-in-law made that with their bare hands? And this concoction, this as well, um, it, it, usually they hand out like cookies, homemade cookies, amazing. But they made this to display them in just above and beyond absolutely ridiculous and the Grinch thing with the dog hold on let me get a clip of it again is this not the most amazing thing you've ever seen it's handmade every single piece the sled the Grinch like the trees they light up they've got batteries the antler on the dog on Max blew my mind everything they make is amazing I'm trying to convince them for years and years to get an Etsy shop they're just you know they're busy people but they should really open it up. Oh man, like the stuff that they make is 
above and beyond. It blows my socks off. This is the table for our white elephant gifts. One of my favorite parts of getting together for Christmas, we always do the white elephant tradition and so much fun every single year. And then Avelina got a flint and steel <laughs> as a gift. So they're trying to light up a candle. Clearly it's a DW candle I got for one of my nieces. She really loves mac and cheese. So I thought it'd be hilarious. She loved the candle and they're trying to light it. They actually ended up doing it, but it took a long time. And I thought that was fun. Just, you know, hanging out with the fam. That's what Christmas is all about. And then this is one of the toys. I think she said she found it at Big Lots or something. It sang a song. It was highly inappropriate. I thought I would share that with you. And then this guy coming up. There's a huge story behind that. Too much to tell. But it's hilarious, so I had to add it. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed all of the recipes that I shared today. Uh, all of these. Two, four, six. Plus the collard greens. Plus the rice that just didn't make it. Uh, I, I just, time, you know? I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.